Thank you very much indeed, Lusk. Here, look, Minister, you're welcome back to the House. Um, as, as I speak on this, Minister, I want to first acknowledge you uh, as a decent and hard-working Minister who has done a huge amount for this country since the pandemic hit, and indeed before that in your previous roles as Minister. Uh, so what I say here is about the issue not the individual minister in charge. And I, I need to put that on the record because I do realise you must have worked 23 hours a day over the last several months in order to keep the people, people of this country in the welfare entitlements that they have. What I'm speaking about today, Minister, as you know, is Class K PRSI. We're here today to pass the Social Welfare Bill 2020. When the first Irish social insurance scheme was set up in 1911, it was seen as a contract between the citizen and the state, and not a commercial relationship. I'd ask you at the outset, Minister, has this relationship changed? Are we no longer a contract between the citizen and the state? It was based on very simple rules of entitlement, based on contributions. It has remained so ever since, with the exception of one piece of legislation and that is the in introduction of Class K PRSI for public officer holders. That legislation, Minister, was brought in in the height of an economic uh, mess that this country found itself in. It's my belief it was poorly thought out, that it was in some way the Iraq that's tipping its hat to the hard-pressed citizens of the state who were now forced to bo bail this state out of an economic mess that was overseen by this House at the time uh, through reckless uh, um, uh, carry-on and by reckless banks. I'm not going to go into the historical side of what happened between 2007, roughly, and 2011, when this legislation was brought in. But there were a lot of pieces of legislation brought in at that time, including FEMPI legislation, which was reactionary. It hit the hardest pressed in society and uh, people suffered badly. Now, you might say those of us that were in the Oireachtas at the time, and I was not, didn't really suffer that much as a result of Class K PRSI being in imposed on us. 4% of salary, it was the least we might do, is to make the same contributions as every citizen of the state into the social welfare system. However, bringing us into the PRSI net using Class K PRSI was for me a significant and almost seismic shift in the policy of the government at the time. In 2018, I believe it was, councillors were removed from the net uh, and they were put into Class S PRSI, which is for the self-employed, which is a bit of a nonsense really because they were not self-employed, but it was done because I took action to ensure that county councillors would be treated properly by the state. And uh, <coughs> so they, be, they, they became uh, beneficiaries of the Class S PRSI. It's deeply regrettable that that was not retrospectively applied to them because many of them have suffered uh, problems with their old age pension and problems with entitlements to various benefits. But we'll move on. The Class K PRSI, as it stands, it's, an, it's arbitrary now. It became uh, a class of PRSI specifically for members of the Oireachtas, judges and the president, apart from unearned income of, 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 of um, people with stocks and shares. Um, but it created an anomaly at the top of an existing anomaly. But thankfully, for the sake of counters, uh, our councillors, the movement to Class S changed things for them. But we never thought about members of the Oireachtas. As a government, we are the employer of members of the Oireachtas. And we have a duty of care to members of the Oireachtas. And not every member of the Oireachtas is fortunate enough to have a double job. Indeed, in my own case, when I came into the Oireachtas, I was forced under statutory instrument to take a career break from my job as a teacher. The only profession in this establishment that are forced into a career break on taking a seat in the Oireachtas are teachers and lecturers in institutes of technology. At that time, I took a hit in salary 
from the top of the teacher's salary rate down to 65,000 a year. It was around about 8,500 of a pay cut I took coming in here. But I was damn delighted to take it because I'm extremely proud to have been elected to this House on three occasions now. And I regard it as a tremendous privilege to be here. But following the 2020 general election, something happened which brought focus to the impact of Class K PRSI. A number of our former colleagues, some of them extremely hard-working, high-profile people, lost their seats, having only been in this establishment for one term. Couple that with the unforeseen prospect of a pandemic to hit the state. Now, not only had they lost their uh, dial seat, and by the way, we all in this house, we might as well be honest and admit from the outset, when you lose your seat, there is a severance payment. It's a small amount of money for somebody who has only one term, and the entitlement to a pension as an Oireachtas member, con contrary to public opinion, is there is no pension until you're 55 years of age. So for young TDs and senators in their early 30s who lost their seat, they suddenly found themselves in a situation where they had to go to the intro office to sign down. And when they went there, they found that they had no entitlement to unemployment benefit, despite having paid 4% of their salary to the insurance fund every single month while they sat in this house. As reckonable employment contributions is now averaged over a lifetime, we've placed these former members in a second peril and that is that we have permanently damaged their entitlement to their contributory old age pension. When the time comes, they will find that they averaged over the, over the lifetime, they have a four year gap and that is going to impact their entitlement to pension. The chilling effect of Class K PRSI is not only monetary, it also has broader implications for democracy and equality and diversity in the political representation. What I'm talking about here is I'm talking about is what we are looking for here, because the lessons learned by those who have lost their seats, the lessons learned by them is if you are an ordinary type employee paying your PRSI and are fortunate enough to get elected to this house where you have no other income, you better think twice before you come in here, because if you lose your seat, you don't just lose your income, you lose in entitlement to benefits. So from that point of view, it is directly impacts democracy and the way democracy works in this country. Are we turning the houses of the Oireachtas into a place for the privileged in society who are well healed and able to afford to come in here as a second job? Or are we turning the Oireachtas into a place where somebody who is already extremely wealthy can come in and uh, contribute to legislation? I would hope not. I would hope that this House represents all of the citizens of this state with all of the uh, diversity that exists in this state, with all of the poverty that exists in this state. I would expect that that is the way this House should operate. We already have gender quotas to encourage the election of women at national election level. But while they're sitting members, they're paying PRSI, which gives them no entitlements to benefits while they're here or after they leave. This is particularly important when we talk about women. Class K represents a serious barrier to participation of women, uh, the unemployed and low paid of both sexes in politics. It persists. Sorry, if this persists, there's grave danger that participation in politics will become the preserve of the wealthy, those with jobs on the side and other external sources of income. This is not what we want as a nation. It's not what we want from our national parliament to look like we are trying to move, we are trying to move away from that. And indeed, I will compliment your own party for the introduction of quotas to ensure that we tried to create a level playing pitch. We still have a long way to go, but we tried to. And it's tremendous to see yourself uh, as a female minister in, in this role. So it is, it is wonderful. It's a testament to not only your own skills and expertise, but to the fact that we have moved forward as a society, a small piece. 
The issue of maternity leave, or rather the lack of maternity leave, is in the news at the moment following Minister McEntee's good news, and I'm delighted for her. I'm sorry she's not here to congratulate her. Uh, it's great news. The, uh, first pregnancy in a house. I know from a woman's point of view, it's full of trepidation and excitement. Uh, from my point of view, I, I remember when our first child, I was totally and utterly wondering what the hell is going on here. And when the child was born, God bless her, uh, I, I just couldn't understand what, you want me to change nappies? I, I, I don't do that sort of thing. But, you know, I learned these skills. Uh, but look, the truth of the matter is, if one of the TDs or senators who lost their seat was fortunate enough to get a job and they'd now be a year into the job, their social, record, social welfare record is broken, they're entitled to maternity leave, gone. And I actually, while I'm talking about maternity leave, Minister, I have to put on the record my absolute disgust at the political system in this country that does not have in place a, a, a system whereby a woman who has delivered a child is entitled to the same uh, uh, career uh, opportunities as any other occupation in society. They should be able to take their maternity leave. They should be, we should have in place a system, we did it very quickly for the pandemic, that you can now have virtual and remote meetings. There is no reason why a, a TD minister or a senator who has just had a child should not be able to observe the operation of the house, whichever chamber we're talking about, from home and cast their vote from home. Good God Almighty, tonight it is not a lot to ask. Uh, I, I, thankfully, we only had two children. I don't think I would have been able for any more. But I saw my wife struggle between career and children. And no matter how helpful I was, my wife always felt that she had to carry a bigger load than any other member of the family. And I think most women here would probably agree with me that, I don't know, they, they, they just carry a bigger load. Sure, we can feed children, us men, and we can, we can change nappies after we learn and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's not the same as having to recover after a nine month uh, uh, period and after the trauma of delivering a child. And God almighty tonight, for a mother the first time around, I, I, I've seen, I have eight sisters. Thankfully, all of them have been able to produce children. I've seen first time mothers lying beside a cradle in order to ensure that if the child woke up, they were able to need, meet the needs of the child. If you're expected to be in here in Leinster House or in the, in, in the Doyle, the Shannad or a council chamber within a day of delivering a child, it is totally and utterly unacceptable. So to get back to where I am and class K PRSI, it's not popular. I will win no accolades in this country for defending uh, members of the Oireachtas and their entitlement to welfare payments. Nobody will thank me for that. And quite frankly, I don't give a continental damn. What I do care about is that we have an equal system across the working population of this country, irrespective of who you are or what you are, that if there's an entitlement there, you should have it. Anybody paying Class K PRSI in this house who has no other employment, when they come to retire, if they do not qualify for a full Oireachtas pension, and by the way, I won't qualify for a full Oireachtas pension because we brought in the Single Pension Act, which again uh, militates against people who move from one career into another. At the end of the day, we have an obligation to look after them. It's a simple thing to repeal this. I agree wholeheartedly we should pay PRSI and I will work with anybody to ensure that members of this house pay PRSI. But we need to be aware of the fact that not everybody is privileged enough to have a second job. Not everybody will be privileged enough to stay in this house long enough to earn a full pension from the house. I would be the first to say anybody that has full pension from the Oireachtas should walk out of here and be damn thankful that's what they have because there are so many people out there that don't have that. But equality and everything that the social contribution system stands for must be respected by this House, not just for the people outside the House, but for all people. So I am asking you today, Minister, to accept my amendment. Uh, I'm sorry for 
speaking on and on about it, but I do feel it's a vitally important issue. And for those members who lost their seats, some of whom are probably watching this today, I am deeply sorry that you find yourselves in the situation where you've had to go to social welfare uh, for assistance or to go looking for supplementary welfare because you don't have enough to live. Remember the lump sum they got when they left here lasted a very short time and we are over a year now into uh, um, a pandemic. So thank you, uh, Lascar here, look for your time. No, thank you indeed.